Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to discuss the local administrator user and how you can potentially prevent attackers from utilizing this account to pivot freely throughout your environment. Also, a new, a new uh, open source tool was released that just might fulfill your security information and event management needs without the price tag. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. If you're in the need of a penetration test, vulnerability assessment, or any other type of security assessment for that matter, contact Black Hills Information Security by sending an email over to consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. All right, the local administrator user. Let's get some basics out of the way. First of all, who is the local admin? Uh, essentially, the local admin is a local user account to a workstation or server that uh, essentially can perform elevated privileges or ele elevated functionality. Uh, some of these things might be installing software, turning on and off the firewall. Uh, he's, he's not a member of the domain and uh, he's usually on every system. Whether or not this account is enabled or disabled is an entirely different question. But the majority of the time we find that this account is enabled and usually has the exact same password on every system within the domain. This is very bad because this means that all an attacker now has to do is escalate privileges on one single host within uh, uh, an enterprise and they now have access to a, a local admin credential that potentially can be used to log into every single other host on the network. So how hard is it to actually gain access to the local admin cred, you ask? Well, uh, it's not hard at all. It's been very well documented in many of the webcasts and uh, you know con talks that have been put on throughout the last few years. Um, escalation is nothing new, and I'm not going to go into too much detail on these, but here's some um, just examples of how you could potentially uh, get to a local admin cred. <clears throat> Our favorite is uh, group policy preference files because it's so common. We find it on pretty much every test. Uh, we also like to do some just standard local privilege escalation. I personally like to use the PowerUp script. Uh, it's a PowerShell script that finds local privilege escalation vectors. Uh, like anyone would ever put passwords in a clear text file out on a share, right? This happens. We've found them. Um, permission misconfigurations. I'm going to give you a quick scenario of this uh, This. This example, um, essentially, whenever we, we do a test, we ask for a non-administrative user. Uh, so whenever I go to an organization, I'll say something along the lines of, do you give your janitors access to the network? And usually they say no, but sometimes if they do, um, that is the level of access I want. I want the lowest level of access you can possibly give me. So <clears throat> somebody who's not an admin administrator whatsoever, uh, if, if, for example, that user is in no other groups except domain users, occasionally we'll find that uh, misconfigurations have been made on other systems on the network. So potentially somebody in help desk or IT managed to put domain users group in the local admins group of some random workstation by chance will find that. And uh, essentially that means that every single user within domain users, which is typically every user in the environment, is now an admin of that system. Um, and then, uh, of course, missing patches because, you know, we never see MS 08067 anymore. Um, <clears throat> okay, so in the event that we, we actually do end up getting a local admin cred here, what's the next step? Well, for me, it's, it's to determine whether or not it is a widespread local admin cred. Uh, and I like to use the, uh, the Metasploit SMB login module, uh, which essentially you just pass out a username and password uh, and uh, the, the host that you want to test out the authentication against. Um, <clears throat> and it will literally just iterate through them and let you know whether or not it was successful or not. In this case, in this, this uh, screenshot I have here, uh, it was very successful in authenticating as a local admin on multiple hosts. This essentially means that they have a widespread local admin account that has the exact same password. This is at the point, um, this, is, this is a very pivotal point to an attacker's process to completely compromising an environment. Um, because at this stage, they can now find where domain admin workstations are and then pivot to their workstation using this local admin cred. And then most of the time, it's fairly easy to just dump clear text creds out of memory using something like Mimikatz. So um, what, what do you do about this? What, what, is the, what is the fix for this major, major problem? It's simple. We kill the admin. We, we disable the admin account. Wait, what? Dis disable admin? How are we supposed to manage our workstations locally? Um, we, it's for you know business needs. We have to have it. Well, okay, so it might not be the right answer, but it is something that I always recommend, um, and it's something that pretty much no one actually ever does, um, because from a manageability standpoint, people still use the local admin user. All right, so what's the next step? Well, Microsoft came in last week with an awesome fix for this. They came out with a tool called the Local Administrator Password Solution, or LAPS for short. LAPS 
essentially kills the problem of the widespread local administrator credential. Um, the way it does this is it automates uh, randomization of every single local admin password on every single system. So every single system now within the environment has a different local admin password. So as an attacker, if I gain access to a system and then escalate privileges, dump the hash, maybe crack the password or get the password somewhere else, it's not, um, not going to be usable on any, any other system within the environment. That creates a major wall in the process of, uh, of privilege escalation and, and domain compromise for an attacker. Uh, so, so LAPS actually, what it does is it's, it's storing each one of those uh, local admin passwords in Active Directory, uh, and by default, you have your domain admins will have access to that. Uh, domain admins can specify specific groups, like if you wanted to have your help desk have, a, have, have access, you know, to, uh, you know, in the event they need to actually have a local admin user password. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I actually... One, one of the things that I, I would definitely recommend if you do go down the path of doing something like LAPS is do a, a, a very, very thorough job um, in inventorying your, your systems. Because actually just last week we did a test where somebody was, or, or an organization was actually randomizing their local admin passwords, but they failed to actually hit every single workstation in the environment. Uh, there was a few legacy systems that didn't get that randomization. And uh, <laughs> they actually had, well, two vulnerabilities. They had one, they, they, didn't, they didn't actually hit uh, some legacy systems with their randomization, and two, they had a password out in GPP, Group Policy Preference Files. And that legacy Group Policy Preference File was like a couple years old, still worked on the legacy systems. Um, <clears throat> so if you do deploy this, uh, I, I included a couple links at the bottom there. The first one is, a, uh, is, is Microsoft's documentation on it. The second one is actually a pretty decent guide on actually deploying LAPS within your environment. Um, if you do this, let me know. Shoot me an email. I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on LAPS itself. Um, the, the security team at Netflix actually released a, uh, an open source tool this week that is going to help assist in um, uh, responding to security incidents uh, it, that you know were, were reported by various security products within an environment. Um, it's called the Fully Integrated Defense Operation, or FIDO for short. And you know, you see, with the, the major problem with implementing many security products within an environment, you you get thousands and thousands of alerts. And it's, it can be hard to manage. So, you know, I, I kind of see this as like a seam like prod, uh, pro, uh, software, um, in that it it can manage multiple multiple sources. You have multiple detectors. So, like you have your firewalls, IDS, AV. Uh, it can correlate those with you know your Active Directory users and also you know external threat feeds like virus total threat grid and help provide you a more um, more thorough view into some of the alerts that are happening within your environment. So if you if you test this one out too, I'd love to I'd love to hear feedback on that. Uh, that's that's it for this episode of Hack Naked TV. You can uh, sh uh, check out more Hack Naked TV at hacknaked.tv. Uh, Security Weekly happens every week. Blip.tv slash Security Weekly. Some awesome show notes at slash wiki securityweekly.com slash wiki. Uh, we have two events coming up that uh, you should definitely check out. Source Boston. It's happening May 25th through 28th. Uh, if you want to get hundred dollars off of your admission. Uh, you have to be one of the first 20 to do it, but if you uh, submit this promo code HTV2015GA, you'll get $100 off your admission to Source Boston. We also have the HTCIA conference coming up August 30th through September 2nd. Uh, that's going to be in Orlando. You can use this 15% uh, off promo code here, Hack Naked, all uppercase, no spaces, to get 15% off. And if you want to contact me, my email address is bow at blackhillsinfosec.com, and you can contact me on Twitter at daptac. Thanks, and have a great weekend. Bye.